Hello friends, welcome to the Bible Hour. This is your host, Dr. John Howe. I'm so glad that you could tune in to today's broadcast, and as always, I pray the Word of God might be a special blessing to you. I'm recording from the nation's capital this evening. I'm in town on business with the Navy, and so I thought that I would take a few moments to record a few thoughts that I hope might be a blessing to you. If you have your Bibles ready, please take them and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Many times, people will ask you what your favorite verse is in the Bible or what your life verse is. And for many folks, it's something very familiar like John 3.16. And for others, it may be uh, some other uh, familiar passage. For myself, it's always been 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. And so if you have your Bibles, I pray that you might take them and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 and read along with me. The Bible says here, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye, through his poverty, might be rich. Now, in this verse, we tackle one of the most important subjects in the Bible, that being the grace of God. The Bible says here, for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here in this passage, grace itself is defined. It says that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now grace, as I said a few seconds ago, is uh, one of the most important subjects in the Bible. Apart from the grace of God, every single one of us would wind up in a place called hell. The Bible says that for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast." Now, the word grace appears for the first time all the way back in Genesis chapter 6, when we are told that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And this grace goes all the way through both Testaments, finally ending with the book of Revelation in chapter 22, when John concludes the word of God by saying, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So from Genesis all the way to Revelation, we find this marvelous grace. Now, here in this passage, it says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. What is grace? Well, to help explain grace, it's probably uh, best to uh, show what it's not and to give the opposite of grace, which is mercy. Now, sometimes grace and mercy are used together, and very often people misunderstand into thinking that these really are the same thing and that they're synonyms, but really they're opposite of one another. When we look at mercy, mercy is when God takes pity on us as sinners and does not reward us according to what we deserve. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So because we are sinners, we deserve wrath. We deserve judgment. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when God bestows his mercy upon a sinner, it's God taking pity on that sinner and not rewarding that sinner according to what their works deserve. Grace is the opposite of that. Grace is where God rewards a sinner and gives a sinner his blessings that that sinner does not deserve. It says here, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. That was God bestowing upon sinful mankind his blessings to any sinner who comes to God by faith with repentance in their heart, and God saves that sinner, he pours upon them his marvelous grace. And once again, apart from that grace, you and I would have no hope of eternal life. Again, Paul said in, in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. How sad that people tonight are trusting religion to save them. How sad tonight that people are trusting their own works, whether it's church membership or water baptism or giving to the poor or singing in the choir or some other good deed that they hope will earn them eternal life. Eternal life cannot be earned. Eternal life cannot be bought. If eternal life could be earned or bought, then there would have been no reason for Jesus to have come and died upon the cross. If you could earn it, why did he have to die? 
But because you can't earn it, that's why he came to die and to take your place as a substitute on the cross to bear your sin debt and make the atonement with his own precious blood that your sins could be forgiven and that you could have the hope of eternal life when you leave this world. The Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible tells us that God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That, my friend, is the marvelous grace of God. God bestowing upon you and upon I as a bunch of sinners his marvelous, matchless grace that's able to give us the very salvation of our souls. If you've never trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, if you've never come to know him as the Lord and Savior of your life, I invite you today, why not even this minute, bow your head and in the best way you know how, ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Confess that Jesus died for you, was buried, and rose again the third day, and that you're putting all of your faith and trust in Him and in Him alone so that you can experience that same grace that myself and millions of other believers down through the centuries have experienced when they too trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. My friends, the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Aren't you glad that it said, shall be saved? Definite, definitive, not might be saved, not could be saved, not perhaps will be saved, shall be saved. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. My friends, I'm glad tonight that I know I'm saved. I know that my sins are forgiven. I know that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed away my sins and given me everlasting life by the grace of Almighty God. My invitation for you and yea, God's invitation for you is that you might experience that same grace that we speak of this evening. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Will you become rich tonight? Not rich in the things of this world, but rich in the things of the world to come, the world that matters, eternal life, eternity. I trust that today, you might receive Jesus as your own Lord and Savior. Thank you for watching. Amen.